Hi, today I'm going to show you how I do cabling without a cable needle. But first, I want to show you how I create a butterfly, a center pool butterfly, when I am doing intarsia or other types of color work where I need a small bit of yarn. I'm going to go ahead and show you with this. I do have this attached to a ball, but I'm going to show you how I create the center pull. Assuming that this is my tail that I'm going to pull from, you start holding that in your hand because that's the part that's going to pull. And then you hold your, your fingers, your, fir your first finger and your thumb out and you're going to wrap the yarn around that. And how I do it is I just wrap it around in a figure eight and just continue to wrap until you get the amount of yarn that you want the butterfly to be. Depending on how much yarn you need for that particular section or what have you. So I'm just going to wrap a bit of yarn. And it's all in a figure eight. As you can see, those are crossing over the center. Once you get the amount of yarn that you need, you snip it off. And then I grab the center where all those figure eights are and I wrap the, uh, the tail that I just cut from the ball around the center. And then I just tuck it in so that it kind of secures it. Just tuck it in the that little hole and then you have a center pull butterfly and as you need more yarn you just pull and pull and there you go. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do cabling without a cable needle. You can see here that I have already done a couple of cables just so you can see what they're going to look like. This first one is a right crossing cable and the way that the pattern would be written in your, or the way that the words would be written in your pattern would be to slip two stitches onto a cable needle and hold them back and then knit two stitches and then knit the two stitches from the cable needle. That's how a right crossing cable will read in the pattern. And I'm going to show you how to do it without a cable needle. Let me just knit to that section. So, here we are. Here's my four stitches. And to cross these two stitches, the second two stitches over the first, I have to pull these over top of these and knit these first and then these. And how I do that is I stick my needle in to those stitches like the like so and then I slip the other two stitches off of my needle and they kind of they kind of dangle there for a moment and then I'm going to slip oh, Sammy's decided she's going to help me with the demo today and then I slip I slip the two stitches that I would normally have on the cable needle back to the first back to the second needle and then I put these on here and I'm gonna pause this just because Sammy needs to leave <laughs> okay sorry about that I'm gonna go ahead and move these stitches back so I can show you that one more time And hang on, somehow I got this twisted. Okay, so here are my four stitches, and I'm going to cross these two stitches over these two stitches. So I'm going to slip my needle in as if to purl to those two stitches. I'm going to gently drop the the two stitches off of my needle that would normally go on the cable needle and I'm going to just quickly grab them with that needle 
and cross those stitches over. And then you just knit them as normal. And you can see there definitely is a cross. Now, I do this with cables. I think you can comfortably do this with cables up to eight stitches. This next one is six stitches. It's going to be done the same way as this one. This one was a four stitch cable. And this is also a right crossing cable. Um, but like I said, I, I think you can comfortably do it with up to eight stitch cables. But you probably you might be able to do it with more. It I just find that doing something larger than an eight stitch cable is a little bit more cumbersome, but not impossible. So here I'm going to cross these three stitches over these three stitches. So I've inserted my needle purl wise. I'm going to slide these other stitches off the needle and then grab these three stitches. And I'm kind of pinching that just a little bit so that those stitches kind of stay still and I don't have to worry about them uh, flying away. The only thing is if you're working with a very slippery yarn, you might have some difficulty. So I've crossed the stitches and now all I have to do is knit them as I normally would because they're already crossed. And then the next, the last cable I have here is a left crossing cable. You can see the cable goes to the left and the way the pattern would be written for this one would be to slip the first two stitches onto your cable needle and hold to the front, to the front of the work. So this time, since these two need to cross over these two, I need to pick up these two from the back. So I'm going to stick my cable or stick my needle into those stitches from the back and still pull them as if to purl and then gently slide these needles off or these, sorry, these stitches off of the needle and then slip my needle back through there very quickly before the stitches get away from me. Again, I'll take those back off just so that I can show you one more time for the left crossing. I'm going to stick my needle in the back and then slide the first two stitches off and then slide my needle right in there and then put those needles back on the put those stitches back on the needle and knit them And as you can see, I have a left crossing cable here, left crossing cable, a right crossing cable, and a right crossing cable. And that is how you do cabling without a cable needle.